to find probabilities based off of a normal distribution that has a mean other than the 0 and 1, we can use the same function in the calculator as we did in the last section. We just have to use a couple of new inputs. So if you go under the uh, distributions menu and find normal CDF, it allows you to input up to four different values. And when you put four different values in as input, those last two are a mean and standard deviation. So we would do normal CDF, uh, like before, a lower bound and an upper bound, and then a mean, whoops, and a standard deviation. And what the calculator is going to do is it's going to take these two values right here and calculate what are known as z-scores. So it'll take, say, your lower bound, uh, for instance, minus your mean, and then divide it by your standard deviation. And so let's say that z sub l, the lo lower bound for the, the z-score for the lower bound. And then it will use that value in place there. And same thing for the upper bound. It will do a z-score for the upper bound and use that in place of your uh, upper bound. So putting in these last two inputs of your mean of standard deviation is very helpful to you because it's less work that you have to do. Now, uh, how do you come up with the lower and upper bounds? Well, that's exactly the same way that you did uh, in the previous sections for normal distributions with uh, standard normals. So for instance, um, if I have a normally distributed set of data and in this case, I'm told that I have a mean of 34.5 and a standard deviation of 5.2. Then instead of the axis that's horizontal here being a Z axis, it's going to be an X axis. But the X values are going to be based off of a center point of our mean. And then each tick mark that we go beyond the mean is going to be in terms of our standard deviation. Now we don't really need to label these things, that's fine. Um, we just need to know kind of where to put things. So 28.1, that's somewhat less than 34.5. So I'll put that here. Now I am looking for x values that are less than 28.1, so those would be values to the left of 28.1. I would shade that region. So this right here tells me that my shaded region that I want the area of begins at negative infinity and goes up to 28.1. So those would be two inputs. So normal CDF. Negative infinity we can't type, but just like last time, we can use the negative E99. And then the upper bound of 28.1. Then we just give the mean and standard deviation that we've listed right here or just read from the problem. So 34.5 and 5.2. Now using those four inputs we can get our normal probability that we need. So hit the negative here, make sure not to use the minus. Second and comma to get that uh, small capital E which represents uh, scientific notation. The 99th and then 28.1 is the upper bound of our shaded region. 34.5 is our mean. And 5.2 is the standard deviation. And the calculator will come up with the area under the curve of that shaded region, which is what we interpret as our normal probability. Part B is similar. The only difference is since the greater than symbol, we're going to be doing an area to the right instead of area to the left, which means 32.4 would be the lower bound of our shaded region. And you can draw it out if you like, but the lower bound would be 32.4. The upper bound is positive infinity, which we would use E99 for. And then the mean is, of course, 34.5 and the standard deviation is 5.2. So there's the area of that shaded region. 
And lastly, uh, if we have a between probability, nothing different happens here. We just simply use uh, these two values for the low, lower and upper bounds of our shaded region. We don't need to worry about substituting in anything for infinity. So last two inputs would still be mean and standard deviation. Once we have that all in, just let the calculator come up with the probability for us.